I'm Ruby Scott Wisher. I went to MLC school and the name of my piece is Soliloquy for the Winter Solstice. Being selected for Encore was a big surprise. I was not ex expecting a selection at all. I opened it and I was very surprised, but I was very happy. Um, it's, I, I spent a lot of time working on my piece, so it was great to know that it was gonna get to be seen by people and not just an examiner. <laughs> my piece is a composition for a cappella choir. Um, I sung in a choir for 12 years and I wanted to do this for my elective composition, something that was a bit different. I don't think choral music is a thing you see a lot in HSC music. It's, the style is kind of contemporary, but experimental, uh, a little bit weird, but I think also very atmospheric. I took a lot of inspiration from a composer called Judith Weir, who wrote some kind of wacky choral compositions in the 80s and the 90s. Um, but also contemporary Australian um, composers like Luke Byrne and Kate Noah Heidke and um, incorporating some of their very contemporary, modern sounding uh, choral ideas into my piece. I think what really helped Ruby in her composition was the fact that by the time she started the piece, she had already sung in choirs for many years. And so by this point, she had a really strong affinity with the voice and knew the capabilities of a choral ensemble. Another thing that really helped Ruby was the fact that the piece was very personal because she used a text, a poem that her grandmother had written. Um, and so she felt extra connected to the project and it was much more meaningful for her. The process of composing a brand new composition can be quite involved and it can be quite a long process. So it's key early on to ignite the interests of the students and get them excited. So the first thing I do is to get students to reflect on where they're at musically. How can we harness some of that interest and excitement in their compositions? I started my choral composition with very much an idea of the kind of sound I wanted it to have. And I had a poem, my piece is based off a poem, so I could think of lyrics that, um, like melody that would match with that or tempo and rhythm that would match with that. But I actually spent a lot of my time composing it thinking, wow, this sounds really bad. Oh, I hate the way this sounds. Um, so I think the biggest challenge for me was self-criticism and feeling like it wasn't good enough or it wasn't detailed enough. but. I think that if you give it time and if you spend time working on it and ask lots of people for feedback, for me, that made me feel better. Probably the best piece of advice I was given, which would be to go with your instincts. I was uncertain about whether I should even do a second composition, but my instinct was to do it. And so my teachers also said, if your instinct is to do it, just do it. You know, same with what kind of piece you want to compose. If your instinct is to do it for strings or for bassoon or whatever, go with the instinct and the same in composing. Go with what you think feels like is going to be right. You have a long time. It feels like you don't have a long time, but you have a long time. You've got, you know, nine months or something. So take it step by step, take it day by day. It does not need to be perfect. My teacher played a massive role in helping me, like, guide the compositional process. Going in for weekly sessions for half an hour to check in and go, okay, this is what I've worked on. Um, I think a big thing is I struggled with the process of getting the ideas I had in my head and that I could sing onto a piece of paper. And so I think a big help from my teacher was working out how you're gonna actually notate things, making a score look neat so that uh, players can understand it and um, helping you also plan with where you want a piece to be in six months or in three weeks, things like that. We use a number of check-in points throughout students' compositional journeys. Uh, this is just a way for us to check in and see where they're at, offer guidance when necessary, put them in certain directions if required. Um, it also helps keep them accountable um, and it helps break up what is otherwise a very um, unwieldy length of time to have to write a piece of music. We offer all sorts of feedback throughout students' composition projects, and we do this uh, with peer feedback. So uh, one thing we do is we do a kind of um, speed dating <laughs> composition session where students will spend five minutes with uh, a peer. Um, and it's a good way for them just to, yeah, check in with each other, get a sense of where they're at. And students often have the most incisive um, and helpful bits of feedback 
um, especially when they're providing it to their peers. So we find that's very useful. I think if I could have done it again, there's not very much I would change, but I think I would have listened to the piece less. That sounds counterintuitive, but it almost got to a point where, especially at the end of the submission period, where I was listening to the recording I had so much and worrying about all the little details. And I just think you need to just listen to it a few times and you go, okay, that's the best it's gonna be for now. Like, you can't get every single piece right. And so I think I wish I'd kind of worried less about all the details and just gone, okay, I'm gonna listen to it through a few times and change a few things, but otherwise it's good for now.